Hello, everybody. I am Jackson Becker. I work for Dakota Valley Recycling. So we are the shared recycling department between the cities of Apple Valley, Burnsville, Egan, and Lakeville. Um, today, I'm going to do a short presentation about um, low waste living. We tried to do this live. We had some technical difficulties. Um, so I'm offering a recorded version here. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. I think this might go up on YouTube and shared through social media. So feel free to just leave any comments and uh, somebody from Dakota Valley Recycling will get back to you as soon as we can. So let's see here, I'm gonna share my screen. Back up to the top. Okay, so low waste living. Um, we're going to start with, oops, here we go. I want everybody to think of a place that makes you happy. Maybe it's uh, a library or a cozy reading nook, or maybe it's a nice clean kitchen and you like to bake or do whatever. Maybe it's a garden. Um, but my guess is that your happy place looks something like this. I know mine does. We all like to be outside. Um, in Minnesota, obviously, we've got tons of lakes, so we like our time near the lake and at a cabin, and often our happy place is somewhere that doesn't really have a whole lot to do with stuff, um, but still, we're surrounded by stuff all the time. Um, so this presentation is mostly about how to reduce the amount of things in your life and just live kind of a simpler low waste lifestyle so all those stuff all that stuff doesn't eventually end up going to waste so what does it mean to live a zero waste lifestyle or low waste lifestyle um, it's a philosophy a lifestyle philosophy and just by definition it means that it 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 means different things to different people so what does living low waste mean to you or why is it important um, that can be different for everybody. Obviously, we don't have an opportunity here to share comments or to do it live, but feel free to leave comments. Um, but really, the common goal is to um, completely, in a zero waste lifestyle, is to completely eliminate waste rather than send it to a landfill or an incinerator. And a low waste lifestyle is similar. You might be generating some sort of waste that goes to a landfill or an incinerator. Um, but the goal is to just reduce that down to as little as possible. And, and by doing so, reducing your consumption saves time, energy, and our natural resources. And we'll get into all that later. And that image there on the right is a just a little jar um, from a, I guess you could call her a low waste superstar in France, B. Johnson. And that's the amount of waste her family of four generated in one year, just a little jar, pretty incredible. So how is zero waste achieved? Um, well, when disposing of waste, there's different, uh, there's different methods. This is the Minnesota waste disposal hierarchy. And it's listed here from um, the, least preferred environmental option at the bottom to the most preferred environmental option. Um, so at the bottom we have landfilling. That's, you know, anything that's garbage goes to the landfill and it's buried and it basically stays there forever. Waste to energy is a slightly better. Um, it goes to an incinerator and it's burned and you're still getting some energy output from that. So it's still going to waste, but it's nice that you, you get something out of it. Composting is the next best option, and that's um, where organic material, a lot of food waste, um, goes to a composting site and is broken down into a new resource. Um, so compost can be used on gardens or on roadside projects or new construction projects, things like that. So you're still getting a, a, another resource out of it. And then, of course, the three best options are what you've heard um, I'm sure time and time again, reduce, reuse, recycle, with reduction being the best, reuse being the second best, and then recycling being the third best. And those are the three that we're going to focus on today. 
I highlighted composting too, but because that's kind of a recycling and it's, it's a great option for organic waste, um, but we're gonna focus on reduction, reuse and recycling. Um, so again, at this time I'd ask for some examples for reducing and reusing and recycling, um, but uh, we'll get into that stuff later. And uh, feel free to just leave as many comments as you want about any part of the presentation. So um, the benefit of low waste living is that it saves natural resources. And this is just the um, life cycle of paper that we'll use as an example. So it starts here with resources, even though this is misspelled. And um, so you have your natural resources and then they're shipped to a manufacturing facility. The resources in this case is paper or trees. So you harvest the trees, you ship it to a manufacturing facility where it's pulped and it's made into paper. And then it goes to a storage facility, a warehouse, and then it's shipped again to a retail facility. And then the consumer buys it, they bring it home or to an office, they print on it. And then hopefully it gets recycled. And then when it gets recycled, you can skip that natural resources stage, go back to manufacturing and goes around and around again. The problem though, is that if you don't recycle it, then it just starts to pile up in the landfill and because you're not reusing it. And so if you don't recycle it, it goes to waste and then there's just all that paper that goes to the landfill. And here are some figures for you. Recycled paper uses 60% less energy manufacturing wise. So in order to make paper from recycled content, it, re it re uses 60% less energy than making brand new paper from virgin materials from trees. Um, recycling one ton of mixed paper could save up to 17 trees. So that's great. Obviously, the more paper we save, the more trees we save, or more paper we recycle, the more trees we save. And recycling every newspaper could save 250, about 250 million trees per year. And worldwide, there's approximately 88% of newspapers are never recycled. So that's just a big time lost opportunity there to um, recycle the paper that's out there already that's usable. And instead, we're throwing it away and we're making new paper from trees. Um, we're going to take that same sort of mentality, but lay it out flat. So this is um, the same sort of, we'll, we'll stick with paper. And so instead of looking at it in a circle, if, it, if you just put it linearly in a straight line, it goes the same sort of thing. You get raw materials, you prepare them, you manufacture them, it goes to a store, and then the consumer uses it. And then at the end, you dispose of the product. And all along the way, not only is, are you using up new materials, but along the entire way you have transportation costs, which costs additional resources and additional energy and contributes more greenhouse gases and pollution. So every step of the way you're using the energy on top of the raw materials. So, um, so re recycling, cuts down a little bit. You're, you're not using the raw materials, but you're still, you're still transporting it from the manufacturing to the retailer, to the consumer, back to the manufacturing. So there's still energy usage along the way, but it's still better because you're not using raw materials. There is a dark side of recycling, however. Here's a chart for greenhouse gas emission sources in the United States. And you can see here that the biggest chunk is this 29% comes from provision of goods, which is just manufacturing of stuff. All the manufacturing that, that occurs in the United States is attributing 29% of the greenhouse gas emissions. And so if we recycle every piece of every item out there that is recyclable, there's only an estimated 6% emissions cut from 100% recycling. So even recycling at its very best is not going to change the world. It's still good. I mean, we obviously wanna do as much as we can. So if you have a an item that is recyclable, like 
a plastic bottle or a glass bottle or paper, recycle it. I mean, we still want to encourage people to recycle, but the point is recycling alone is not going to change the world. So how can we overcome that dark side of recycling besides becoming a Jedi? And the answer is to reuse. It's the next level up on the waste hierarchy. And when you reuse something, of course, that, that one particular item has to be manufactured and sent to the retailer. And then it goes to the, you, the consumer, and you use it. And instead of disposing of that product, you just use it again. And then before disposing it, you use it again. And the more times you use it, the better it is. The more every use cuts down on that env environmental impact just a little bit. If you use something twice, it's twice, it's half as harmful per use, if that makes sense. So just the more you can reuse something, the better off you're gonna get, the better off you're gonna be. And there's even one more step that you can take that's even better, and that's reduction. And reduction is when it's kind of conceptual and it's, it can be hard to understand sometimes, but basically when you reduce waste, you're just simply not using it at all. Of course, there's still items out there that are manufactured. Manufacturing is gonna occur all the time. But if you think about your own personal impact, if you don't use one particular item, that's one, that's, that's waste that you cut out of your life. And if more people do that, Hopefully the idea then is that it'll affect the market, manufacturing will go down and waste in general will go down. So reduction is just simply not using something. Um, for example, we'll get into more examples later, but one is just uh, if you want some water, use a glass or just use a glass from the tap or use a reusable water bottle and then you're not using a plastic single serve. You're just reducing that plastic disposable bottle out of your life. You're not using it. And that's waste reduction. And reduction is great because it prevents energy and pollution um, embedded in products. So you're, 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 you're cutting down on the energy and pollution upstream um, in your, again, this is all about the the energy and pollution that you're contributing to by using per particular products. And if you're not using them, then you're not contributing to the energy and pollution embedded in that product. And uh, same thing with environmental impacts. Uh, and like I said, if you can, if enough people are reducing waste from their life and cutting down on certain items, then the idea is that you don't the need for manufacturing from raw materials will diminish and eventually we can just recycle stuff, reuse stuff, and we won't be needing to cut down trees or harvest crude oils for plastics and things like that. And uh, reduction is worth dancing about. That's a good way to get, get, uh, get over the dark side of recycling. Uh, and so waste prevention, waste reduction, it starts at a place like this. Obviously this is a shopping mall. All shopping malls look the same. So this could be from anywhere in the United States. But just think about the amount of things that you see in this image. You have a store full of hats. You have, you know, clothing stores, makeup stores, sunglasses. All that stuff ends up somewhere eventually, and most of it is going to end up in the landfill. So if we can cut that stuff out of our life, hopefully they'll, again, I, I'm hammering this point home, but the need for it will go down, the need for manufacturing will go down, and then we're all just living a lower waste lifestyle. But marketers, the problem is that marketers want us to fill our lives with stuff. They, they, they attribute happiness to things. And, you know, they're, we're constantly being bombarded with commercials and advertisements saying, you know, making us think, wonder, uh, is what we have new? Is it trendy? Is it on sale? Am I out of style? And how could I ever live without this particular product? Um, 
So for example, how, how could we ever live without our banana slicers? You know, what are we gonna do without our banana slicers? It's a real product. For the outdoorsy people in us, maybe we're wondering how are we gonna live without our tactical wet wipes? Because just using a reusable washcloth apparently isn't good enough. We need tactical wet wipe, tactical wet wipes. Or maybe we need vegan gluten-free spray on vitamin D sunshine. You know, if we don't want to go outside and use our tactical wet wipes, we're going to stay inside and use our spray on sunshine. These are all things that are, in my opinion, completely useless, but we're being bombarded with marketers trying to sell this stuff to us. Um, so you just have to remind yourself that we don't need all of this stuff. And the less stuff we're buying and using, the less waste we're making in the end. And just remember that despite what every advertiser out there is telling you, stuff does not make you happy. Stuff is just clutter. And that's a whole different presentation that I'm happy to talk to you about. But your life ends up becoming something like this. It's overwhelming. You're losing stuff. You're, you're, losing, you're wasting energy looking for lost items. Um, maybe you have to pay more to store all this stuff. So it just becomes completely overwhelming when maybe it can look something like this instead. Yeah, you know, this is just, this isn't about, this picture here is not about the mixing bowl or the roller. It's about the experience you're having with your kids or your grandkids having fun in the kitchen and cooking and baking. Or maybe it's something like this, going back to this, going back to the idea of our happy place, a lot of people's happy place being outdoors, you know, getting in touch with nature and enjoying. Again, this photo is not about the canoe. It could be any canoe or you don't have to have a canoe. You can just go for a hike. Um, so it's your, your life isn't about stuff. So how can we reduce waste? Now we'll get into some actual tips here. The first is to just say no thank you. If people, you know, if you go to a store or um, let's say you go to, you're, at a, you're at, an, at a community event and somebody's offering free samples or trying to give out flyers that you have for something that you have no interest in, just say, no, thank you. You don't need to be a contributor to that waste. I understand it's already made, but the more we say no, thank you, the less we're going to try to um, cut that waste out as a as a whole group. Um, junk mail and catalogs is a good one. I'm sure everybody gets junk mail, or a lot of people get junk mail, and there are resources out there for um, trying to get your name off of junk mail lists. And uh, um, oftentimes, catalogs or um, Companies that send you junk mail will give you an opportunity to send it back to them and just say, I don't want to receive this anymore. Or like I said, you can look up uh, websites that will allow you to take your names off of distribution lists. Um, another good app or another uh, good tip is to gift experiences instead of things. Uh, you know, maybe for somebody's birthday or for Christmas, you can buy them, um, you can buy them tickets to a show or take them on a trip or um, you know get them get them cooking lessons or or something like that there's so much more that you can buy for somebody or give to somebody that that uh, that isn't just an object a thing um, another big one is to use less of fewer products uh, so here's an example. I mentioned reusable water bottles earlier, um, but this is a bad example of using <laughs> reusable water bottles because uh, in reality, the materials and energy that go into manufacturing one reusable water bottle is a lot greater than what goes into a single use disposable plastic water bottle that you might buy at a gas station. So the idea is to use the one that's reusable because every time you use it, 
you're cutting down on the environmental impact per use. So if you only use a, a one of these thick plastic water bottles or worse, a steel water bottle, if you have a steel water bottle and you only use it once or twice before throwing it out, the environmental impact of that, the environmental impact per use of that water bottle is really high because uh, mining steel and manufacturing steel is, um, is harmful to the environment. But if you have a steel water bottle and you use it every day for a year, you're taking that environmental impact and you're dividing it by 365. And so the environmental impact per use goes way down. And if you keep that same bot water bottle for 10 years, I mean, that's just, that's great. You, you are minimizing the environmental impact per use. So find an object that work, or find an item that works for you, whether it's a water bottle or, um, you know, whatever it is that you can, that you can reuse and reuse it as much as you can. That's, that's the best thing you can do. And then every time you reuse that object or that item, you are not using a disposable item. And so you're reducing, you're reusing the good item and you're reusing all of those, or sorry, you're reducing waste that could be contributed by all those other disposable items. A lot of R's here, it's kind of confusing, but uh, yeah, that's the, the important thing is to just reuse as much as you can. Don't collect reusable items. Um, another idea is to make your own cleaners. So instead of just going to the store every time and buying your own window cleaners or your own um, dish soap, there are plenty of recipes online you can find for making these items in bulk and it's, it's cheaper. Um, you can make them without uh, having to buy a new plastic bottle every time. Maybe you get your own uh, amber glass bottles or something and you make um, make your own cleaners and put them in those glass bottles and you just keep reusing that bottle. Uh, opt for washable towels instead of something like tactical wet wipes that I, like I mentioned earlier. Um, just get washable towels or, or washable napkins and um, you know, just use use them. Once they're dirty, you put them in the wash and then, and then you can just use them again and use them as much as possible because by washing those things, you're still better off. The environmental impact of washing reusable items is still less than always using disposable items like paper towels or wet wipes, which no matter what anyone says, a flushable wet wipe is not flushable they have to go in the garbage. Only toilet paper is flushable. So don't believe any flushable wet wipe nonsense. Um, borrowing, sharing, and renting are three great options. Uh, you don't always have to go out and buy something new if you need something. If you're doing yard work and um, you need a weed whacker or something, see if one of your neighbors or your family members has one that you can borrow. Um, if you have something that you know somebody is in need for, share it with them, borrow it to them. Or if you have a particular item that's hard to find, there are plenty of businesses out there that allow you to rent these sort of things um, for yard work, for housework, for um, recreation. You know, you can go out and rent a kayak or rent bikes. Uh, those things are great to own if you want, if you're going to do it frequently, but if you're only going to do it a couple times a year, maybe you're better off just going and renting that sort of stuff. Um, another <clears throat> great option is to buy from bulk bins. Um, so I'm sure everybody's seen bulk bins at the grocery store, but I, I don't know, maybe you don't use them or been intimidated for whatever reason. Uh, but it's super easy. You just bring your own container, a reusable container. Maybe they have some that that you can use there, but often they allow you to bring your own reusable container. Um, you, you weigh the container, you tear it, you fill it up with whatever you want, you write the PLU on your container, and then the cashier will weigh whatever you have in your reusable container and uh, charge you for that. So it's a, great, it's a great thing to do, first of all, just to, again, cut down on disposable plastic. Um, 
you know, if you need to buy um, <clears throat> a cup of slivered almonds, you don't have to buy a full bag of slivered almonds. You can just go bring in your, your one cup container, fill it up, and you're not using any disposable plastic. Um, so that's a great way to do it. Also, again, it helps you get specific amounts. If you don't need a full bag of something, you can only, you, you just need to get what you need. And then, uh, then you're, you're, you're getting rid of the risk of getting too much because food waste is also a big, a big thing that we want to cut down on because um, it really contributes to greenhouse gas emissions once it goes to the landfill. So if you're only getting the amount of food that you will use, then you're reducing the rest of the food waste. Um, libraries, again, kind of like borrow a share and rent. Obviously, the whole point of a library is to borrow books. You don't have to buy them because most people read a book once and then it goes on their shelves. Um, so libraries are just a great, a great option for borrowing it, reading a book once, giving it back, and then somebody else can do it. Um, <clears throat> another one is to plan meals, uh, kind of going back to the bulk bin one and the uh, food waste reduction. Um, food waste is just a major issue. So when it goes to the landfill, it produces methane, a greenhouse gas, and that's actually 20 times more potent than carbon dioxide. So, you know, when we hear about greenhouse gases, we usually think of carbon dioxide, which is true because there's so much of it in the atmosphere. But really methane is the more potent greenhouse gas in our atmosphere. And food waste and landfills is a major contributor of that. So by only planning out meals, make sure you're going to the grocery store, buying what only what you need, and no, having a designated use for whatever food you buy, um, that's going to cut down on your food waste dramatically. And if everybody does that, it'll cut down on food waste ending up in landfills dramatically and will cut down on the methane dramatically. So planning meals is a very important one. Um, <clears throat> along the same sort of lines, we have no waste meals. Um, so not talking about the food specifically, but what you package it into. So if you're packing lunches for your kids to take to school, or if you're packing lunch for yourself to bring to work, think about what you're putting that stuff into. Do you have to use a disposable Ziploc bag every time? Or can you use, um, you know, Tupperware that can be reused over and over and over? Uh, are you bringing your lunch in a paper bag, which feels kind of antiquated now, but who knows, maybe people still use paper bags. Um, and then are you throwing that bag away or are you recycling it? Uh, just get a lunchbox instead, use it every day. You don't need to throw anything away. Um, another option is to be a thrifting superstar. So um, this is just, do you have to go out and buy brand new clothes or can you go find something at a thrift store uh, that is that will serve the purpose and has already been used once or maybe more and then you're giving it another life? That's a good option. And then another option is to just repair something. So if you, if you have a household object and it seems to have run its life and it's not working anymore, before throwing it away, try to fix it if you can. And there are resources out there. Uh, this is an old slide. This is from January, obviously. But um, fix-it clinics have, occur in Dakota County every month. And they rotate uh, around different libraries in Dakota County. And um, basically, it just have, if you haven't been, they have volunteers there who are handy with whatever household item you might have. And uh, you just bring something in, they'll fix it right there, and you're gone in 30 minutes. And, and you've already given your household object uh, a new life. So this can be things like electronics or kitchen appliances. You know, if you have a toaster or a blender that's not working, bring it in. If you have a vacuum that's not working, bring it in. If you have clothes that need mending, there are people there who are handy with, uh, with sewing machines that can mend your clothes. So bring those in, bikes, anything like that, bring it in. I have some 
statistics for you, which are pretty cool. In 2018, there were 12 clinics, like I said, once a month. There were 63 volunteers, 485 residents brought their items in. And of with those residents, it was a total of 847 items and 85% of which were repaired on site that day when they brought that item in. And by giving those, those items new, a new life, they were able to divert 4,000 pounds of waste, two tons of waste from going to the landfill. Uh, you know, those items might have gone, ended up in the landfill eventually, but you're still extending their life a little bit and you're cutting out the need to buy a new item. So um, just fixing things is such a great option for reducing waste. And then of course, donation is the last one. So if you have something that you don't need anymore, <clears throat> give it to somebody else. It's, it, the, it's bad enough to throw something away when it could be fixed. It's even worse to throw something away when it doesn't even need to be fixed. If you have furniture that's still in good condition, donate. And there are tons of options out there for donation. Dakota County Re the, the Dakota County Reuse Guide has a whole map of where things can be no donated. They have a list of what can be donated. There's some, there are some items that can't be accepted or, or donation sites won't accept for, for uh, reuse, but there are so many things that can be donated. More, you'd be surprised by how much can be donated. Um, they offer tips on donating, so how to know if what you have is, is worthy of donation um, and how to do it safely if you have, you know, maybe you have kitchen knives that are still in good working condition but you don't need any more, so they offer tips on how to do things safely. And they, offer, they also uh, include the top products to buy used, so there are plenty of items out there that are um, that are still, that don't necessarily need to be brand new. So um, the Dakota County Reuse Guide just has a list of things that, um, that you can buy used that are still perfectly acceptable and useful. And the other thing I want to emphasize here is that reducing waste is not new. This has been around for a long time, 90 years, more, probably more. Um, and my generation's grandparents or even our grandparents uh, understood the importance of the three R's, reduce, reuse, recycle, long before the three R's was a thing. And um, the, the, the main difference is that back in the days of let's say World War II, it was much more, um, recycling was encouraged for social reasons, whereas now it's, it's environmental reasons. Um, in World War II, for example, we, the country just needed all the resources we can for, um, you know, for, for defense purposes. So we were re recycling as many tires as we possibly could, we saving as much scrap metal as we possibly could, um, which is all great. It's, just like I said, the difference now is that things are, we're, we're encouraging three R's more for environmental reasons. We don't need to be manufacturing brand new products from raw materials when we have these materials already in manufactured products. If we can reuse them or recycle them, then there's no need for um, those virgin materials. Um, and then if you just cut stuff out of your life, if you just if you just focus on reusing what you have and you're not constantly shopping for new things, uh, you'll end up finding that you have a lot more time and energy to enjoy the stuff you have and to enjoy experiences. And uh, this is a nice little phrase that I think um, actually was popular in the United Kingdom during World War II and it's use it up, wear it out, make it do or do without, it's kind of fun. Um, okay, so just really quickly, I'm going to talk about recycling because uh, we always get questions about recycling. I know recycling can be very confusing because it's changing a lot. So I'll just breeze through some recycling tips. And at the end, I'll share some resources. And again, 
um, ask any questions you have in the comments or um, I'll share my uh, contact information at the end. So where does recycling go? Um, <clears throat> for some reason, there's this, uh, this idea out there that recycling ends up in the landfill anyway, which is just not the case. In fact, in Minnesota, it's against the law. If something is collected as recycling, it has to go to a recycling facility first. So um, it goes to these materials recycling facilities, or sometimes they're called materials recovery facilities. Um, but we affectionately refer to them as MRFs. So this is what a MRF looks like. They're really cool. A lot of it's automated. There's still people that work on the line to help with sorting, but a lot of it's automated. So uh, for example, um, aluminum cans are sorted out by um, a magnetic eddy current. So they're just like flung in different directions and sent to their own sorting bin. Steel cans are pulled out with magnets. Um, you have paper that's sorted by uh, these vertical screens as it goes up and things fall through the cracks and the paper makes it through and plastic is sorted through uh, with a um, an optical scanner so it can actually has a, it has a laser that determines the density and the type of that plastic and uh, and then at the end of the conveyor belt there's little puffs of air that sort it into its own bin so um, they're <clears throat> they're really cool facilities and uh, if ever you see an opportunity to tour one, I highly recommend it. And Dakota County usually offers some tours. They call them the Tour to Trash, or uh, there's also the Master Recycler Program that Dakota County offers twice a year, once in the spring and once in the fall, uh, that includes some uh, field trips. So I highly recommend checking out a MRF. Um, and then what can you recycle? Is a little confusing because it can depend on the hauler, but I'm just going to go through the, the basics here. Um, because in Dakota County, in most of the cities in Dakota County and in the four cities that Dakota Valley Recycling serves, Apple Valley, Burnsville, Egan, and Lakeville, we have open hauling systems. Uh, so residents can choose between the, license, the different licensed haulers in the cities, and those licensed haulers might accept different materials for recycling. Um, so, like I said, I'm just going to go through the basics, but anything, if you have ever, if you have other questions, go to our website, which is dakotavalleyrecycling.org, and then you can search for curbside recycling. So, what goes in the recycling bin? Metal cans, um, food and beverage cans in particular are recyclable, aluminum or steel are recyclable. You don't have to take the paper off the side or do whatever that's good the way it is. Uh, give it a quick rinse. They don't have to be spotless, but they, you don't want them to be full of food. And uh, the other important thing is that they're dry. I'll get into that later. Plastic containers. Um, again, plastic is where most of the confusion comes from for recycling. Uh, but the ones to remember are if you find the triangle with the number on the bottom, ones, twos, and fives are the recyclable ones. So those are always good to go. Your hauler might take some others, um, but ones, twos, and fives are the best. Stick with those. Things like uh, beverage bottles, laundry detergent bottles, condiment bottles, yogurt cups, uh, shampoo bottles, that stuff's too. Recycling doesn't have to just be a kitchen activity. You can set recycle items from all over your household. So look for uh, plastic bottles that could be found elsewhere in your house because those are still recyclable. And then um, on plastic containers, leave the cap on, even if it's a different type of plastic, uh, it'll get sorted out at the facility. If, it's, if, the cap, if you throw the cap in the recycling separate, it's just too small, it'll fall through the cracks and uh, it'll end up just being trashed anyway. Glass bottles and jars, um, again, food and beverage containers especially. Um, you cannot recycle glass that like a broken window pane or a broken mirror or a broken ceramic dish or mug or something like that. That stuff is not recyclable. So just keep it to food and beverage bottles and jars. And then um, lastly, you have paper boxes, paper and paper boxes, cardboard, of course. Um, 
hard or uh, soft cover books like phone books those are okay to go in the recycling magazines of course can go in the recycling um if you're if you have a stack of paper that has some staples in it those are okay the staples are fine if you have um envelopes or uh, boxes that have the little plastic window those are okay those can go in there you don't have to remove the window uh, it'll still get recycled just fine um, the other thing I don't think I mentioned it yeah the other thing is um, paper cartons like an antiseptic carton you might get from uh, you might get it like juice or soup uh, those are also recyclable those are mostly almost entirely made of paper. Um, so those are, those are recyclable as well. And same thing with the plastic bottles, leave the cap on and then just recycle it as is. So how to prepare your materials. Um, the things you must do are um, try to collect it loosely and definitely not in plastic bags. If you're going to use any bags, collect it in a paper bag and then um, and then you can just put that in there. But it's better to do like what this guy's doing down at the bottom, collect it in some sort of reusable bin and then just dump it into your recycling. So uh, yeah, no, definitely no plastic bags. That's like the biggest recycling taboo right now. No plastic bags. Those can go, you can collect plastic bags separately and bring them to like a retailer. Although I have to say that during um, this COVID stuff, most retailers have discontinued their plastic bag recycling temporarily. Um, so check back later to find out when they're restarting. But no plastic bags in recycling. The other thing is to keep things as dry as possible. So do not leave liquids in your bottles or cans. Dump them out first and then recycle it. And uh, same thing like if, you're, if you are um, just giving something a quick rinse to try to get some food residue out, um, try to make sure it's not soaking wet when you throw it into your recycling because that'll uh, devalue the, uh, the paper and other recyclables in your cart. And then uh, the other things that are encouraged to do are to have it clean. Like I said, give it a quick rinse. You don't have to, you don't have to, for example, put a glass jar in the dishwasher before you recycle it. As long as it's mostly clean, it's okay. The item, the the food item that's the biggest problem is peanut butter. If you have a jar, like a plastic jar of peanut butter and you just cannot get it out without wasting a bunch of hot water, you're better off just throwing it away, honestly. Um, but for anything else, if you can give it a quick rinse, then you're good. Recycle it. Leave labels and caps on. All the labels can stay on. Leave caps on, that's the best. And then don't crush it because actually you need things to be in their original shape for it to get picked up by the um, automated sensor properly and then to get sorted out by the the air or whatever. If, like, let's say if you flatten um, an aluminum can so it's perfectly flat, it might actually get um, picked up into the paper, um, the paper sorter, which of course it's on paper, so you don't want it there. And then it just reduces the value of that paper. Um, so these are the big items that are not accepted. Styrofoam of any kind, even if it has the triangle on the bottom, it's not one of the type of plastics that can be recycled, so that has to go in the garbage. Plastic bags and any sort of filmy wrap, those have to go in the garbage. Those are called, at MRFs, they refer to them as tanglers because there's a lot of spinning parts at MRFs and plastic bags especially get caught up in the machinery and then they have to shut the whole system down and go out and cut them by hand. So it's just a total waste of time and energy for the MRFs. And if it ends up <clears throat> getting in uh, mixed with any of the other uh, material lines at the MRFs, it's just going to devalue the recyclables again. So keep tanglers out. Garden hoses are another example of tanglers. Anything that's long and wiry can get tangled in the machinery. So garden hoses is, is a good um, 
example. Another example is like a wire uh, clothes hanger. Not recyclable, throw it, throw it away. Um, paper plates and cups, even though it's paper, they, they have a barrier for the food that um, is usually either waxy or sometimes even a plastic film. And uh, that, that barrier makes the paper not recyclable, so garbage. Plastic flower pots, again, even though they, have, they might have a triangle on the bottom, garbage. A lot of times they're dirty or they're not the right type of plastic. The other thing is black plastic in particular. Even if it's a one, two, or five, black plastic does not, it absorbs the laser of the optical scanner. And so the machinery, the, the MRF can't sort it properly because it can't determine the density. So black plastic, even if it's a one, two, or five, garbage. Um, like I said, mirrors, window panes, ceramics, garbage. Uh, receipts have a special uh, material on it that kind of like um, makes it disappear with heat and time uh, and that makes the paper not recyclable. That's also garbage. And then the other big one is shredded paper. So some of the haulers used to accept shredded paper. Um, like if you put it in a paper bag and then stapled it shut or something, but not anymore. The shredded paper uh, is just too small. And so once it goes to the, the MRF, the bag might break open and then the shredded paper, the chunks are too small. So it just falls through the cracks and it ends up littered all over the MRF floor. And then another item that's not accepted in recycling is batteries. Um, and batteries are the same thing. They're too small, they fall on the floor. And then like we've had that it's happened in Dakota County where you have a MRF floor littered with uh, shredded paper and a battery. And if somebody drives a piece of machinery over that battery, it could cause a spark and the, can, the shredded paper can start on fire and the whole MRF can start on fire, which like I said, has happened in Dakota County as recently as a couple of years ago. So no shredded paper, no batteries. In, in short, when in doubt, throw it out. Really, it's really important to keep recycling clean and to make sure that there's as little contamination as possible. So stick to the basics. And if you're confused about anything, you're better off throwing it away because if our recyclables end up too contaminated, they're all going to get trashed anyway. So only recycle what you know can be recycled. Um, and there are options for recycling items beyond the curb, we say, beyond your curbside recycling bin. And um, the big, the main resource in Dakota County is the recycling zone. And that's the Dakota County Hazardous Waste Drop-Off Facility at, in Egan. Um, and they take all sorts of electronics. They take paint, tires, hazardous waste like chemicals, paints, cleaners, pesticides, um, <clears throat> they take fluorescent bulbs, really any kind of light bulb they'll take, uh, scrap metal they'll take, um, batteries they'll take, and they'll take even more like um, Christmas lights. Uh, they'll take year round. And like I said, shredded paper, if you can put it in a paper bag, um, that can be taken to the recycling zone as well. And then we have um, some other recycling resources. So what about items that are not collected curbside or don't are or aren't excited at or aren't accepted at the recycling zone? Things like furniture, appliances, and carpet. Um, you can find options for disposal or better yet, donation or recycling um, on our website. So we have two features. We have one called the I want to get rid of feature, which is a drop-down menu right on our home page or we have a recycling map. And so this is what the map looks like. And if you click on this button, it'll open the legend. And if and inside the legend, you can click any of these drop down arrows and it'll give you a list of places um, that accept these different items. And then another great um, resource is the Dakota County Green Guide. And I'm actually gonna show you that one um, just because it's so nice. So let's see, I think I'm, 
Um, there we go. Okay, so this is this is Dakota County's website, and if you go to environment here, here's the green guide. And the green guide, you can just you just type in whatever it is you might need to get rid of, and it'll auto populate and help you find what you need to get rid of. So let's say you need to get rid of um, some yard waste. There's yard, garden, and trimmings. And here's your full list. Here's some tips. Backyard compost first, great option. Um, otherwise, you can call your hauler and get yard waste pickup. And then if you can drop it off, here are all the options for drop off, um, which is excellent. Let's try, let's try mattresses. So mattresses and box springs. What I like about the green guide is it lists out the best option first. So if you click mattresses, the first option, donate. It has to be in good condition, but if it, you have a mattress in good condition, donation is the best option. So there's the St. Vincent de Paul thrift store in St. Paul, or this great nonprofit organization called Bridging Inc., which they have a drop site in Bloomington and one in Roseville. And um, they're, they are just great. If you click on them, there's any fees, necessary fees. It's free for drop-off. They offer pickup services if you'd rather do that. There's a phone number, phone number, a different phone number for pickup services, and then the website and the map. So um, the green guide, very easy to use and um, very helpful. So let me go back to my presentation. Okay, almost done here. Uh, actually, I think we are done. Yeah, so though I gave you some tips for reusing waste or reusing items, reducing waste and um, recycling once if you have uh, items that can be recycled. So once you reduce and reuse and recycle as much as you possibly can, then you're living that low waste lifestyle and maybe you might be able to get your yearly waste down to a little jar. Something to work for. Um, if you have any questions, like I said, feel free to leave any comments or questions in the comments wherever this is posted, uh, whether it's the city Facebook page or Dakota Valley Recycling's Twitter, or if it's on YouTube, please feel free to leave in comments. Um, you can also go to our website to find more information. You can call our recycling hotline or send an email. Um, I didn't include my email on there. Um, anyway, it's jackson.becker at burnsvillemn.gov. Uh, but you can, there's also, if you go to our website, right on the home page of our website, scroll down to the very bottom, and there's a button that says send an email. Pretty easy. Click on that, write up whatever you need to send, and it'll come right to me. So anyway, um, that's my presentation for today. I hope uh, you were able to learn something that you can apply to your life and uh, get your lifestyle closer to that low waste lifestyle. So we'd love to hear from you if you have questions or comments. All right. Thank you. Bye.